Hi, I'm Rick Eubanks, and this is my wife, Carol, and we're excited to be a part of Declaration Church in spring. What, what, what brought you to Declaration? We were transitioning uh, from our former church in Burleson, and he asked God what was next. What's next? And then there's another reason we're here. Well, because my kids and grandkids are here. <laughs> so that was a big thing. Yeah, she so. said, when we, when we change and move, then I want to be near our grandkids. And I said, well, I agree, absolutely. <laughs> We've done See at the Pole now for, a bit, I believe, 33 years. Uh, again, it began as a, a simple concept, uh, just really was a series of events. It was a, it just so happened that, uh, that we got to play our part in. Uh, we had a very prayerful youth group for over a year, claiming our campuses, um, going to school and praying for the school. And our state leader, Chuck Flowers, a good friend of mine, had a vision for something that would follow up our state leadership school, Super Summer. And we shared that idea and uh, I told them what my little ninth graders went out and did. And that became just a very organic prayer meeting uh, where they would pray at their school in September. We thought we'd have 3,500. And by the time September rolled around, there were 47,000 or something like that in three different states. And it just so happened, National Network of Youth Ministries, which I've been involved with, I wasn't on staff then, but since the mid 80s, since it almost began, uh, they said, share with us what you guys are doing in Texas. Well, well we're praying to our flagpole one time. Uh, they said, well, can we do that? We say, well, do you pray? Do you have a flag? Uh, yeah, how much it cost? Nothing. Is it legal? Yes, as long as it's student led. So uh, this year it's up 35%. Uh, we don't really promote it. It's a word of mouth thing. It was just something we could give away. And God's used it to reach. I mean, we, we, we understand at one time there were like over 2 million kids praying, praying all around the world. Uh, together and they know even if there's only a few of them at one flag there's a lot of other students praying at the same time they are so it encourages them and then the results of that which we never dreamed of so were after the poll pre-poll rallies campus clubs they said let's do this every week and so God just said you guys get out of the way I've got this thing now and so we're, we just watch and uh, it's been amazing to see I love we're for God, we're for people. I love, we're for neighbors and nations. That's where my heart beats. And uh, just their, their investment in people. Uh, we talked about the welcoming aspect. You want to share about that? Well, we were blown away just by walking <laughs> the building. Um, how you were greeted outside, inside, all the way down, pretty much by greeters and people, and even young people were out there greeting, greeting you or, um, it was just very warm and welcoming. Everybody has a place. That's why I love the everyone's invited shirt because that, that speaks of whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever calls on, on the Lord, John three sixteen. whoever uh, receives him. I mean, it's, it's the whosoever is fleshed out there. And you go and it doesn't feel like church. It feels, it's, I mean, it feels like church. It doesn't feel like an elementary school except for the small toilets. And uh, when you go, it's, it's, uh, it really is, it's where God is present. You know that you've experienced God when you've been there. John always mentions, you know, there might be someone come in who's, this is their last chance to give, give, give God a chance. And so I love that concept that we're, we're, we're that keyed in on people. And being a part of that, we always talk about giving, but your time, treasure, and talent. This is a place that a person can do that. Um, certainly giving financially, seeing the possibility of a new, I say church building, because we're the church, it's not the church, it's the church building, but it's a tool. And I believe it, it's a, an equipping center for the people so that we can send them out. We were excited, we, we talked about what our commitment would be. It's of course, raising our own funds, and and go in different directions. We came up with the same number and we were excited about that and, and have tried to just, we've been consistent with that number and uh, the different places that we're, we're able to invest. Uh, being, being older people that we are, we like to invest as much as we can uh, in our latter years and that was a part of what we wanted to do and, uh, and also serve in a place that, uh, that really was making an impact. It's not about a building, it's not about any of those, those things, it's about the people 
whose lives will be transformed. Uh, and so we're excited to, to help finish that out and encourage others to be a part of that. I love the metaphor of setting the tables. I, I hear it as the fact that people are coming and we welcome them and warmly and greeting and they feel loved and we're gonna take care of them. The church is a body, it's, it's an organism, it's not an organization and it's a family. And so welcome to the table. I mean, where do you have most of your fun times when you're, when you're eating together and you're fellowshipping and everybody's having a great time and, and I see that as such a wonderful, uh, genuine fellowship concept but also bringing them to the table where maybe they had nowhere to go. Uh, and they get to come to a place where they had no family, no friends, or they felt alone, isolated. They get reconnected at the table. And so that, that just, uh, it means a lot to me that that phraseology is used at Declaration. And, and I share that with other people. I said, it's, it's, it's welcoming people to the table, to the salvation that Jesus gives, to the growth possibilities there, all done in a, in a community. And so we're big on small groups and community. Uh, we can't be isolated. That's the way, uh, that's the way a, a lion or something would, would attack. A, they, they get the weak person, they, they isolate them, and then they target the, the, the isolated. And that's why we have to continue to move in a community, uh, keep people safe and protected.